In this video I'll be showing you how I made this silver opal and turquoise ring. The first thing I'm going to do is melt down some scrap silver of mine and pour it into some wire and sheet ingots. So once I have those I'm going to start rolling them out and getting them to the right size on my rolling mill. As for the sizes I'm going for, I want 16 gauge or 1.3 millimeter square wire and some 22 gauge or 0.6 millimeter sheet metal. So now that I have all the sizes I need, I need to clean up some of the edges and start marking everything for cutting. And to do this, I'm just going to be using a hand file and a cutting miter jig. So once I have all that cut out, I'm going to be using some dividers to mark out how thick the band is going to be, which is 10 millimeters, and the length. So once I have all that marked out, I can cut out my center ring blank. So once I have that all done, I'm going to round it around my mandrel to get a curve and then shape it more into a D shape so I can solder everything together. For this piece, I'm just going to use a little bit of flux and a tiny piece of hard solder. And then throw it into your pickling solution to clean it all up. Once you have it all clean, you can put it onto your mandrel and start shaping it back into a ring shape. Once I have that done, I make sure that I can test fit it if it's something that fits my fingers. After that, I'm going to file it down so everything has a nice uniform finish to it. And make sure to save all the silver dust from this. So I can do some math using the measurements from my ring blank and make my outer bands now. And I'm going to need a total of three of these. This will basically be the same process as what we just went over making the first band. The only real difference with these is you're going to have to flatten them out because they get a little wavy on the ring mandrel. I made these pretty tight, so I have to hammer or really press them into place, but once they're there, they pretty much stay. So you'll have to do this with all three of them, and if they're too tight, you're going to have to stretch them out a little bit. So when it comes to soldering these, you're going to be using medium solder, and you're just going to place a bunch of pieces all over the top side of it, and do one band at a time. So start with one side, flip it over to the other, and then we'll work on the center. After soldering each band, make sure you pickle the piece, because if you don't, and you move on to your next one, your solder will not flow properly. So for the center one, I'm just going to put some flux onto it, and place pieces of medium solder all the way around it. I happen to have a spinning platform so I can turn this and heat it at the same time so it makes it really easy to get everything equally. And there we go, all the pieces are completely connected now. So I'm going to use some 220 grit sandpaper to sand down the outside to remove any extra solder and if I have any holes I will fill them back in with more solder. So now that both sides are completely uniform and have no holes, I'm going to clean up the inside of any solder marks or extra solder from the soldering joints. So I'm also going to use the 60 grit sanding wheel to clean up the rest of the piece. So that's the blank finished, and now we need to get it ready for putting inlays into it. So glue needs something to grab onto, so I'm going to use a Mizzy wheel and grind into this to make it textured so my glue will stick and make sure to do this to any area that you're going to be putting glue into. So to inlay the stones, I'm going to be using some black Starbond medium thick glue and pretty much hand place all of my stones as I go. And then once I get about a quarter of the way around, I'll spray the accelerator onto it to harden the glue and continue inlaying. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing with the opal. You can use a clear glue for this, but I actually really like how this black one looks with these stones. So once everything is set in place and all my glue is hardened, 
I'm going to start filing everything down. And when filing, I'm making sure to keep a curved motion going so I don't make any flat spots. So opal and turquoise are very soft stones, so I'm able to just cut away at this using a normal steel file. If you're using much harder stones, you're probably going to want to use a diamond file for that. So after filing down the first bit, I'm going to add any stones where stuff is missing, and then fill the rest of this in with a mixture of glue and silver dust. Once all of that cures, I'm going to file all of it down smooth again using the same file. So after checking it to make sure that there's no gaps or holes, I can start polishing and cleaning up all the edges and then do a final polish on the whole piece. So after going through all the different grits of polishing wheels and a final grit of polishing compound, I need to clean it off with some soapy water, and here's the finished ring. So that's about it. If you found this video helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment, I try to get back to everyone. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to my channel. I try to get out videos every week. And if you want to help support my channel, I have a Patreon, and you can start supporting as low as a dollar. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!